Hi, I'm Stani. Coming up next on the forum, I'll be sitting in with Chadwick Niles Phillips. We'll be talking about hip-hop history in the arts and the avant-garde event. That's coming up next on the forum. I'm Sani. Thank you for joining us on SPNN's Forum. Sitting with me today, I have Chadwick Niles Phillips, and he's here today to talk about hip hop history in the arts and the avant garde event. Indeed. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for I hope I didn't me. totally butcher your name. Oh, no. I mean, it's a lot of syllables. <laughs> it is. Know? And I yeah. have a long name. I should know better. For sure. <laughs> but you know, the more you say it, the, the, the more easier. it gets glued to your mind, the more it smoothly comes out. Off you know? the tongue. Yeah, so, again, so. thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And so, um, I'm going to start off with asking a little bit about your history before okay. we get to the avant-garde events. Indeed. Um, so, how, what is, what is your connection with hip-hop history and the arts? Well, um, I was in the music industry when I was in New York City. Okay. As a hip-hop artist on Couch Records, released a single with them. Okay. Uh, graduated from Michigan State University. And has always really been just into the arts in general. Done a little acting, I draw, I'm an MC, hip hop artist. So I wanted to really create a curriculum that had to do with my philosophy, not just on the arts, mm -hmm. but on life and with education being the nucleus of it. Okay. So So when you say hip hop education, I mean who are you who are you give, who are you educating? Well, I'm educating mainly the youth, you know, mm -hmm. but the community at large in okay. general because hip-hop is just an amazing phenomena that has went down so many different avenues of inspiration with so many people of so many different cultures mm -hmm. but then when you look at where it comes from it comes right from around the way right from the block but then it's like a spiritual thing mm -hmm. so when you're speaking about overcoming struggles that's something that everybody can relate mm -hmm. with and then me being a youngster growing up within hip-hop culture I've looked at my favorite artists as uncles that I never met mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like their lyrics were guiding me through life mm -hmm. and I feel like that's the reason why I graduated high school and college so to bring that type of philosophy and mentality back to the communities and society is an amazing thing it's an honor okay so you know I gotta ask you this. Mm -hmm. What are you teaching the youth about the state of hip hop now? You hear, I know you know there's a lot of complaints about how hip hop has evolved from being more conscious mm -hmm. to now it seems like it's more, I'm not gonna say gangster rap because gangster rap seemed like that was more 90s, mm -hmm. maybe new, uh, the beginning of the new millennium. Yeah. Now it's just money, drugs, yeah, sex. Yes. What is, what, how are you, you have, you have to have that as a part of your curriculum. So For how sure, are you? well, one thing as an educator, you have to always keep your ear to the street. Mm -hmm. You have to always know what's going on mm -hmm. within the generations that you're teaching about. Mm -hmm. So if I'm teaching about, you know, the 1800s, or if I'm teaching about ancient Africa, I have to know about, you know, the ancient African griots mm -hmm. and Mansa Musa, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm teaching about Phyllis Wheatley, or if I'm teaching about the Harlem Renaissance, I have to know what's going on within those generations. Right. So as much as I'm keeping my ear to what went on then and studying that, keeping my ear to what's going on now and studying what's going on now because that is what's most relevant as of right now. Mm -hmm. So with these students, what they're seeing, what they're going through and what they're listening to, all of that is relative. Mm -hmm. So if I pay attention to that while I'm creating my classes and my outlines, I know exactly what standpoint to come at them from. Mm -hmm. So when we look at where hip hop is now and what's going on, um, amongst the negative, you do have positive, you mm -hmm. know? But when I'm speaking about the negative, if I'm critiquing something, I want to attack it from a standpoint that they can understand because automatically they can get defensive because it's like, oh, okay, he's older than us. So, But then when I let them know that I am paying attention to what's going on, right. that opens them up more. And then so when I bring them to the positive of what's going on, like a Kendrick Lamar mm -hmm. or like a J. Cole, then that'll open them up that much more to listen. And then you can get them the message because it's not looking down on them. Right. It's bringing things together from an understanding standpoint. Do you ever present it to them in a way to allow them to decide whether it's positive or negative? Most definitely. Okay. Yeah. You have to like attack from a lot of different angles. Mm -hmm. And the end result is them just loving you for life. 
Like, mm -hmm. regardless, wherever they see you, they'll remember something that you talked about. And you're almost like a distant mentor. Mm -hmm. You see them, you give them props, and you just tell them about different jewels and knowledge on life, and mm -hmm. they carry on. Okay. So with each student, it's a connection that you make for life. Right. And that's what I had when I was younger. Right, so when I see older people who I came up under, when I see them, I give them props. Mm -hmm. And they're still guiding me from a distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... That sounds like that's what you do during the day. Mm -hmm. So you say that you are running or organizing this event, the Avant Garde. Indeed. Um, I, I'm not using the right words to describe what you're doing. That sounds like it's more of your night job, more the, the yeah, cool, like the cool the after hours. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. cool laid back after hours night job yeah. for the adults. Yeah. yeah, so tell me about that. Tell me about the Avant Garde. Well, the Avant Garde is an arts and entertainment production company mm -hmm. that I founded on December 13th, 2014. Mm -hmm. And it's really about bringing just the amazing aspects of culture and art to the forefront okay. from every single avenue, renaissance, from um, music to live painting to acting to spoken word to dance to fashion. It's just really bringing everything to the forefront in a very unique and original way okay. because it's a lot of people who have a craving for that type of appeal, mm -hmm. but sometimes it can be hard to find because it's more of, a, of, a, um, of an alternative type of thing, mm -hmm. you know, like you'd have to wait six months for a D'Angelo concert, right. you know, and me, I came up under Eric Badu and D'Angelo mm -hmm. and Maxwell and Tribe Called Quest, so for me to bring that type of philosophy and mentality to the forefront in a way that everybody can groove, have a good time, but not just that, but be inspired, like mm -hmm. you're not just coming and chilling, you're coming and you're having a high having an actual from, experience. The, from the beauty of mm -hmm. what's going on, so mm -hmm. that's what it's about. So aside from your past experience, and like you said, you came up listening to Erica Badu and, mm -hmm. and D'Angelo, aside from that, what yeah. got avant-garde started? Aside from that love and that passion for music, what, what made you, know you say, what? you know what, I'm going to do this? Well, my father, he came up within the bebop era. Mm -hmm. I have a picture of my dad playing bass with Thelonious Monk on the keys. He came up with oh, Miles wow. Davis and all of them. Okay. And he retired from the Colorado Symphony Orchestra after 48 years. So his genetics has always, always been embedded in me, you know? And so with that... With that blessing, you get a whole other type of vision mm -hmm. that you just don't see art from, but you see life from. Mm -hmm. So whatever you produce, it's more of being a leader in a sense. So even though this is about entertainment and arts, it's still something spiritual behind it as far as guiding people to come together in unity. Because I feel like that's what life is about. Mm -hmm. Like television tries to deceive us to make us and think make life us is this way. Mm -hmm. But if you turn off your television and you really tune into the beauty of life, it's a whole other side that you'll love. So with the avant-garde, that's what it's really about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's just so, just so I can clarify, mm -hmm. it's just about you wanting to extend the idea that we are supposed to be a community. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And when I say that, I mean just everyone, because you have community and you have society. Right. You know? Community is 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 um a part mm -hmm. of a society. Of a society. But when right. you bring the whole society together and mm -hmm. it's soul to soul, it's spiritual, then that's a whole other connection. Because everyone's connecting on one accord, and that's art, that's life, and that's love. You know, okay. so that's what the avant garde's about. You know? So, is the avant garde? It's a it's a organization that puts together different events, or is it the name of an event? Well, it's an organization. Okay, yeah, okay. It's an LLC okay. that I'm the CEO of. Okay, okay. And I put on different events that has to do with the arts. So, but music is the nucleus of it. Okay, I yeah. hear you. Mm -hmm. So, name some of the artists you've you've worked with that so you presented. So, for so my for my um, launch party, I've worked with Margot Davis, mm -hmm. who's in New York City doing the thing. Shout out to Margot. Uh, Theo Brown, who is a pianist with a band called Not Guilty. Mm -hmm. He plays at Arnella's every Friday and he tours and stuff. Proper T, who is an amazing uh, up and coming neo soul artist. He performs at the Scratch Bar okay. in the Warehouse District of Minneapolis and he tours and do it as live. And Leah Renee Dior, mm -hmm. uh, you heard of Leah mm -hmm. Renee Dior, right? Yeah, so that was my first show. The second show was a um, album release party mm -hmm. for Ashley DuBose, okay. who is a, I mean, everybody here knows Ashley mm -hmm. DuBose, uh, just an amazing, amazing artist and person. She mm -hmm. was on The Voice, a finalist on there from St. Paul. Mm -hmm. Both of those shows were at the Bedlam Lord Town. It was a woman named Sanko Phoenix. Vivo M, uh, Maria Issa, mm -hmm. and Property nice. was a part of that show as well. Okay. And um, yeah, so I've hosted both of those. And each show had a live painter. So the first show was nice. an artist named Dell Sugar, uh, AKA Lorenzo Crockett. The second show was Kenneth Caldwell, who mm -hmm. is a, a well known visual artist. And the third show is an Afro, an Afro futurist uh, painter named Ron Brown. So okay. it's just about bringing something very, very unique. 
Okay. Yes, in this upcoming show. Can I talk I, about the upcoming show? Yes, please. I was going to ask you. Okay. So what's what's on the on the forefront? So the upcoming show is going to be on Saturday, May 23rd. It'll be at the Como Dockside Lakeside Pavilion, which is an amazing venue. It's these tall pillars. It's outdoors. It's mm -hmm. like a, a shell a shell band, and it's right off the lake, and oh, it's nice. just beautiful. And they're revitalizing it, reopening it. They're remodeling it. They're adding a restaurant. And our show will be the first show that they have after nice. the reopening. And it's nice. a part of the Music in the Park series. And everybody is invited. This is a, a family community event. You know, something about love, unity, positivity, and art. And the artist performing in this show mm -hmm. is uh, Proper T again, um, Cassandra Talley who is a guitarist, songwriter. She's so, so for Her style reminds me of Amel LaRue from Groove Theory. Okay. She, she's bomb. A uh, gentleman named Cortland Dre, a.k.a. K.O. He's a part of the legendary Steel family, which is a uh, prominent family within music within the Twin Cities. He's touring, songwriting for major artists, all types of things. And then Alicia Cloman, she's the lead singer for the Not Guilty Band okay. that plays at Arnella's every Friday, and she is amazing. Okay. And I'll be hosting the show, and uh, it's just going to be live, all ages. Tickets are being sold at Amsterdam Barn Hall, mm -hmm. downtown St. Paul, um, at the Avenue Eatery mm -hmm. in Minneapolis, and Electric Fetus in Minneapolis, ticketfly.com. Doors open at 6, show starts at 645. Okay. Yeah, Memorial Day weekend, family event, outdoors, Music in the Park series. Do you ever invite your students to come out there? Of to course. See? Okay. Because usually an avant-garde show is 21 and up. Right. You know? Uh -huh. So this will probably be the only one <laughs> that's all ages. Okay. So I'm telling all my students from all schools to come out, bring their families. It's going to be a gorgeous event. Okay. Yeah. You've been watching SPNN's Forum. My name's Sonny, and I'm sitting in with Chadwick Niles Phillips, and we're talking about the avant-garde, the upcoming yes. avant-garde event that's coming up. And sure. um, it sounds extremely exciting. Nice Thank beginning you. of the summer and event. That's exactly what it's about. <laughs> right next yes. to the lake and right next to the lake. And the sun, it's a warm. family event. And it's a family event. Um, for sure. So yeah. I because I'm interested to find out what future events do you have going on aside from this beginning well, of summer event? <sighs> I don't want to let the cat out the bag uh, too much, but <laughs> there's some great, amazing things coming up, mm -hmm. you know, that are still in developments, but everyone will be finding out about them very, very soon. But the avant-garde is, um, you know, it's, it's growing. Okay. And, and it's about the people. It's not mm -hmm. about me. Mm -hmm. It's about everyone else and providing, being a server to the people. So yeah. how, since you said that, is there a way that up-and-coming artists can contact you beca because obviously you're connected to this classy, jazzy, um, neo-soul kind of yeah. uh, scene. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there are artists who want to be in connection with, with artists who are really making moves. Yes, and so, that's what the avant-garde is about. So, I mean, how, how uh, are you are you on social media? Do you have a yes. website? Yes, uh, well, my Facebook is uh, www.facebook.com slash Chadwick Phillips. Okay. And you can reach me through my Hip Hop History in the Arts Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash Hip Hop History in the Arts. Okay. And my email is cphillips35 at gmail.com, C-P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S, 35 at gmail.com. Okay. My website will be coming soon. My Twitter is uh, at Niles underscore Davis. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's how we doing it. Niles Davis like Miles Davis. Exactly, huh? yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So do you ever, I want to go back to the kids, because I really think it's, it, you're literally like this moonlighting slash teacher guy. It's, it's real yeah, cool. Yeah, <laughs> it is. You're right. Uh, it is. It is. And yeah. so um, do, you, do, you, do you ever see yourself featuring, because I know you're coming across, since you're working with kids, I know you're coming across new talent. Yeah. Did you ever consider featuring a, a, a one of your students? Well, hip-hop history in the arts. Mm -hmm. That's what that's for. Hip hop history arts is like a 18 and under avant garde. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. And there's a lot of great plans for that as well, as far as our showcases for youth and so, talent. And so my, so mm -hmm. for just right now, you're just teaching them. You're just, you, yeah. know, you guys are just talking about what's going on in hip hop and the arts. Exactly. But there's no showcasing. Well, I mean, now my students at the high school for recording arts came out with an album called The Next Move. Okay. It's out worldwide right now, digitally. Okay. And it's in three record stores here Urban Lights. Electric Fetus and Fifth Element. Nice. And my students at uh, Roosevelt High School and Patrick Henry, where I'm teaching right now, mm -hmm. uh, we're just finishing an album called The Random Piece. So these are two albums beneath the hip hop history and the arts curtain, you know. Okay. And so it is definitely some plans to create showcases for them to get them a platform. Because mm -hmm. I came across some talented, I'm sure you have. Super talented 
students, even right. fifth graders. Right. Are just amazing. It's like, where did they catch that from? Mm -hmm. I know you're teaching kids about the artistic element of hip-hop. Yes. Are any of them concerned about um, the business side of, of hip-hop? Of course. Okay, I'm okay. So, so how, how, are, how are you laying side. that out? Because with current events that are going on, you have Bobby Shmurda. He mm -hmm. came out with a hit, but he's yeah. now having issues with his background. Totally. That's a part of the business. Indeed. So what are, you, what are you telling them? Yeah, well, I was in the music industry myself. Okay. I won a talent search to Hot 97 through. Wow. With Koch Records. Yes, in uh, 2007. Okay. So I've seen the whole industry. So it's just an amazing thing to be able to tell them about what I've seen, mm -hmm. what to look out for. But I tell them it comes down to independence, you know? Because mm -hmm. usually if you get taken advantage of, it can come down to what you've lacked, you know? Right. So if you take time to become independent, to uh, earn knowledge, reading, um, getting your education down, just getting everything set, then you'll know if someone gives you a contract that isn't right, right. or you'll know if somebody isn't the right person to be within your team. Because you, know? you hear that so often with younger artists. You, you hear so, that. Because they're so eager. Because right. all they're seeing is the dollar signs. You and know? the flashiness totally. of it. But, but if you're smart with how you do business, you only have to worry about the money. Is that a portion? Is that a, is that a part of your curriculum? Is there like a specific totally, a, most, a yeah, business? Yeah, totally, yes. They learn about the business acumen. They learn about just being great citizens as far as how to carry yourself, how to speak to people, mm -hmm. not putting emotions in the business. And they learn about education. That's the main aspect. Everything I'm doing now has to do with my education. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with my talent. Mm. The talent's going to always be there. be there. But if I'm not educated, then I probably won't be talent. able to walk through the different avenues I'm able to walk through. It's almost like my Joker card mm -hmm. in my deck. <laughs> a, a more personal question: What do you? T because I'm sure some some of your kids are getting this from you. Um, what with you running your own company and you mm -hmm. being able to do something that you don't really hear about yeah. in the Twin Cities, teaching kids about hip hop. Because I don't believe I'm pretty sure that's not a part of the standard curriculum. Yeah. So that freedom, that that career independence, are you? Is, is that a part of the curriculum as well? Most definitely. Okay. Yes. I mean. Like everything that I do, whether it's within my profession or outside of it, you know, it's like a reason behind it, mm -hmm. you know. It's almost like that's what I was sent here for, mm -hmm. to educate and to just bring inspiration and motivation through whatever I do. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the avant-garde or I look at hip-hop history and the arts, that's part of an even bigger reason as far as what I'm here for, mm -hmm. you see. And so when I moved here from New York City, um, I had to start all over again, mm -hmm. you know, and it was uh, a trying time because I thought that, you know, the music industry, me being this hip hop artist touring and everything, that would be like my career. That was your but Joker I've card learned, time. Exactly, you know, <laughs> and so, but I've learned that when you own your own business, you know, um, you're able to provide opportunities for people and then you're able to guide people as far as what they want to do because you've been there before, you mm -hmm. know. And it's way more um, financial stability within owning, mm -hmm. you know? But you have to take out the time. You have to put your faith into every step that you put into. Because like mm -hmm. I told you before, <laughs> when you're not it. working a nine to five, you're always on, on the, the clock. clock. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. really about preparation. Mm -hmm. And um, this is just showing that you can own. Mm -hmm. You can be a business owner. You can flourish. You know, we're not taught these things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to learn yourself. You mm -hmm. have books at the library waiting to be read, picking up dust. You see? Mm -hmm. Go to the library. Read a book about business. It's waiting for you. It's free. Go on Google. Right. You know? So we can mm -hmm. use social media and all of these different aspects in a positive way, but it's really up to us to actually do it, and then we can learn as much as possible, and then you can own your own, and then keep it mm -hmm. after creating it. So. You are an awesome person. Thank you. You are, you are, you are extremely awesome. You, you are very inspiring. And I know that there's a young, there's a young men of all cultures watching SPNN. And Thanks. I know you're inspiring them. But before we go, I, I please let us know the, the, the final details on Avant Garde um, and where they can get contact information about okay, it, about the event that's coming up. Just you talking to me? Okay, talk, <laughs> okay. Because you know you talk to me. Okay. Um, so the Avant Garde. Como Dockside Lakeside Pavilion presents the Avant Garde Saturday, May 23rd. It'll be just an amazing, amazing show. Mm -hmm. If you've never been to an Avant Garde event, this is something that you need to experience in your lifetime because it's something that just provides so much joy. And if you love music, if you love the groove, if you love something that's different and unique and not typical mm -hmm. and something that you'll really be filled after you leave from being there, mm -hmm. this is something you have to be at. And these four artists embody what soul 
is really about. Okay, Ryan Bynum, the music director, mm -hmm. this dude's been all around the world, and it's a blessing to have him a part of this. Ryan Brown is like a world-class talent, mm -hmm. and I used to host at the Poets Groove, mm -hmm. which was the longest running open mic in the Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. I hosted for two and a half of the, I think, 16 years that it's been around. Okay. So my following from there, um, it's just a beautiful thing to be able to connect with people, mm -hmm. you know? So. All of that embodies what's going to be uh, Memorial Day weekend, Saturday, May 23rd. Nice, yes. nice, nice. So yeah, they don't even have to worry about going to work. In after that, exactly, that nice. yes, <laughs> yes. Get your barbecue, your potato salad, you know, your sweet potato pie, chill with your family, then come out with your fam. It's going to be amazing. And you know. where is there a number people can call or, or something? Well, they can call 612-987-3095 to get, get information. more information. Uh, Avenue Eatery. Mm -hmm. in Minneapolis, Electric Fetus in Minneapolis, those two places are selling tickets, uh, the Amsterdam Barn Hall mm -hmm. in downtown St. Paul is selling tickets, and at www.ticketfly.com, and I'm selling tickets as well, so, okay. yeah. So, tell me about this mouthful of, of profession, <laughs> independent <laughs> contracting, artist in residency, what is that? Well, that is when you go to different schools, different mm -hmm. organizations, programs, and you partner up with them and you work with what they have within their programming. Okay. So I'm at Roosevelt High School, Patrick Henry High School through Deacon's Youth Program. Mm -hmm. Roosevelt High School, that's with the YMCA Deacon's Youth Program. Mm -hmm. Patrick Henry, that's with the Boys and Girls Club Deacon's okay. Youth Program. Okay. And so it's a partnership as an independent contractor to work with their youth. Okay. Yeah. How did, how did you even find out about something like this? Well, before I started working at the high school for recording arts, I was doing it lightly. I was working at uh, Sojourner Truth Academy, mm -hmm. and then I started teaching at their after school program and Phyllis Willie Community Center okay. after school program. That's when I started Hip Hop History and the Arts. So from there, I started working with the 4 H Youth Program, mm -hmm. Urban Arts Academy. It started to grow, and then I did a summer program with Watershed High School called the Youth Performance Series, Act One through Five, where it was uh, youth driven theater shows that had acting, spoken word, poetry, and creative drawing displays. And that blew up, so the high school for recording arts took notice. Mm -hmm. So I went from lightly doing independent contracting while working a full-time job to working as an advisor at the high school for recording arts. Wow. And so there I um, coordinated the community meetings that they had, which mm -hmm. was every Wednesday. It was an outing where everybody gathers, and we bring in a guest speaker. And it's a project-based school, so we'd have a student at each one present their project, and it would be critiqued, and we'd have uh, performers. And I taught performance there every Thursday and uh, my students came out with the album. So after I worked there for two years, it was time to step out as, uh, as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, um, well at the beginning phases of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. working for myself. And um, so yeah, it takes a lot of dedication, uh, a lot of faith, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you have to be smart because a lot of people, they, they jump out without having any grounding under them to land on. Mm -hmm. When I say that, I mean like they don't have enough money saved up to take that chance, mm -hmm. you know? So if you're working a nine to five, you wanna stack up and save up as much as possible to where when you take that risk, at least you have some safety. Some type of cushion. To yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. But then it does take some type of risk too, as mm -hmm. far as just believing in what you have. Cause all of us are here for a reason. It's just us, up to us to extract that out of us. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, some people who have no college education, high school education, are making so much money, right. but that's because they figured out what they're here for mm -hmm. and they know what the world needs and they sculpted it up to a point where it's dang near perfect. So when they show it, people will pay for it, they'll come to it, you know? And when it gets to those levels, you don't have to worry about money. It's really about the passion mm -hmm. and the root of what you're bringing to the people and the money will come. That's, I have heard that so many times. Yeah. Do what you love and eventually the money will come. Totally, yeah. yeah. Do you work with college students at all? Yes. Okay. I work with. I've taught a uh, class at McAllister College before. Nice. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Yes, All right. indeed. Do, yeah. you, uh, do you intend on expanding to? Um, because I remember having a teacher come in or huh. a professor come in when I was in college, and he showed me around, not necessarily to the hip hop yeah. and the and the jazzy neo soul scene, but right. well, it was actually the jazz scene. But I, they he took they took he took the class to different jazz spots, live wow. music and food in the. In the in the Twin Cities, so um, yeah. I what you're talking about, I always wondered how they did something like that, and I'm wondering right. if they were a part of the independent contracting. Indeed, so. well, I mean, it's something like I could have taught with Community Ed teaching mm -hmm. adults, mm -hmm. you know. So it's something that can range mm -hmm. from youth all the way. You're up not to against adults. it. 
Never. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah, cool. Because people are people, you know. So tell us a little bit about the this album that you made with your kids. Like, how so, did they get started? So um, the Beatles <coughs> program at the YMCA and at the Boys and Girls Club mm -hmm. brought me in to teach different aspects of the arts, mainly music. Mm -hmm. And so the first semester, my students at Roosevelt created a song and a video. The second semester, I wanted to expand things even more, and I started working with Patrick Henry. So I was like, you know what? We're going to make an album where we're merging students from both schools. So this oh, is like nice. cross-production. Okay. So I have a, um, pr a producer named Neri, who is a sophomore at Roosevelt. He made four out of the six songs that the students at Patrick Henry mm -hmm. recorded over. You see? Yeah. So it's like a cross-production, cross-writing type of thing. And the end result is a 13-song album called The Random Piece that'll be uh, released uh, later in May, early June. And it's just amazing because this is the first time that a lot of these artists have ever recorded, have ever written. And these are the and kids. They have so much talent, but it's raw. These are the kids. These are the kids, yeah. Okay, so it's hip hop, neo soul. What is what's the flavor? It's, it's hip hop. It's soul. It's uh, poetry. It's, it's singers rock on and it? roll. Yes. It's I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling this you. This is awesome. Yes. And they're so raw, you know? And the fact that they're able to use that rawness but then sculpt it mm -hmm. into something that has structure is yeah. just amazing. Because it's something that they can keep for the rest of their lives. Do you believe it? Do you see it being featured at any of your avant-garde events as maybe background music? Or? Potentially. When okay. they become old enough. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. I yeah. After, okay. you know, to five years in the avant-garde in London, you know, okay. I'll fly them out there. All right. <laughs> that's really cool. They're for really sure. singing and, yes, and, 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 and rapping. I'm and telling you. That's cool. It's amazing. I want to hear the music. Because yeah, it's about, it. even with them, it's about real music. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's like kids and teens, kitty. Nah, I'm like, so, nah. Y'all still got to make real music, even though y'all 15. Thank you for, for sure. coming out. Thank you for having you me. And you are just, you're illuminating. Thank you. <laughs> illuminating, relinquishing. <It's, laughs> thank you again for coming out. For sure. All I right. appreciate it. I'm Sonny, and you've been watching SPN Inform.